Welcome to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining us. I've got Donald Thompson, CEO Walk West, on the show with me today. Donald, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Glad you're here. Let's talk about the two decades of experience you have in growing and leading firms. I, I want to hear more about this. Started as a you know quota carrying sales guy. Uh, in the early 90s, dialing for dollars when that used to be a thing and uh, chasing the software dream. Uh, started my career as employee number seven with a tech startup here locally in Raleigh and was very fortunate. My mentor, Grant Willard, promised me a job and teaching me how to run a company, which was very different than other people were offering. And so I took him up on it. And uh, 10 years later, when uh, we were acquired by Adobe Systems, part of the company was split off and I became the CEO of that spinoff company. And that kind of jump-started my career. Tell me about being a thought leader and being able to influence the company culture and in, in the ability to, say, drive exponential growth. So two things, right? Company culture and then driving exponential growth. In terms of driving company culture, one, I think you've got to be a good example. Right. You've got to emulate the behaviors, the mindset that you want in your team. Right. So if you want a, a collaborative culture, then that means you've got to ask questions and not just dictate everything uh, as a top down decision. Right. If you want empathy for employee needs, then you've got to slow down and have Friday afternoons where you really spend time getting to know what's going on in the work product that your employees are delivering. So, number one, we got to lead by example. And that means creating an openness in terms of driving hyper growth. I think it's very simple. Uh, there's a disease of low expectation that people have. When you reverse that and you expect the best of people, they'll bring their best game to work every day. And as long as you as a leader are helping them achieve it, it, it you'll be amazed at the kind of results you can get from people every single day. Great advice, great words of wisdom. All right, there's another part to this, it's diversity. So you've got to prioritize and uh, inclusion, the, the, including this diversity into your business. Walk us through that. One of the things that, you know, diversity and inclusion is a buzzword today, but a lot of ways that I think about it, and my perspective is somewhat unique as an African-American entrepreneur, there's been times where as a salesperson and a business owner, I've gone years without sitting across the table and seeing an executive that looks like me. One of the things that I've described to people is you have to own your circumstances and win anyway. You can't wait for the world to change to your needs. You have to create the environment that you want to win in. And so with that said, one thing I teach people is not to have a chip on their shoulder about what you don't want, but to find people that are like-minded that will help you get what you do want. And that attitude allows the people with the right heart, the right spirit to come to you. And I think that's radically important. And as a leader, as a business person, the more you succeed, the more you put the limelight, not necessary on your ethnicity, your gender, your background, but on your performance. And then as I've risen as a business leader, I've had more influence on what a team looks like. And so I've come at diversity from a different angle, not what somebody in power can do for me, but how my performance can drive me to be more influential. And then from a different outlook as a business person, I can now create a more even playing field because my performance has given me ultimate credibility. Great. That's gr that was a great answer. Thank you. Now, aside from that, you have to build teams, and you've got diverse teams. Walk me through that part. One of the things that's, that's occurring, whether it is the growth in the number of uh, females that are in the workplace, whether it is uh, ethnicity issues, when you're building a team, the way I approach it is, what is the business impact that diversity drives to my goals? When you think about it from a commercial standpoint, what you do is you take some of the emotion out of it initially, and it gives you a reason as a business owner to learn something new. I don't think that people go into work saying, I don't want any women in leadership. I don't want any African Americans on my team. I think they're trying to make a payroll. I think they're trying to meet quarterly numbers. So when I talk to business executives, I try to talk, teach, emulate how the diversity is going to affect the bottom line of the business, opens up ears and hearts, and then we can move the needle in actually making change and making diversity a C-level issue. Brilliant. Brilliant. All right. Donald, unless there's anything else, I think you pretty much covered it for today. I'd love to have you back again, though, so we can start to drill down into these high-level conversations we had today. Would you mind? Uh, I would love, love to do it. Enjoy your show. And uh, again, appreciate the opportunity to share. Thanks for being here. All right, you've been watching CEO Money with Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining with us. Don't forget, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.